Hey, hello and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speaker Webinar Series. I'm Stacey Roman and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Cynthia Farhat Higgins, a writing fellow here at the Middle East Forum, join us to discuss the Muslim Brotherhood's secret apparatus. This is Ms. Farhat will speak for 15 minutes and open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type out your question. And with that, I'll turn the discussion over to Cynthia. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, thank you all for joining in. I hope you are staying warm and safe. Uh, thank you uh, to the Middle East Forum for having me today. I think uh, this is uh, a very important topic and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, a, a, what I'm going to say is going to be quite controversial in the academic circles and in counterterrorism circles because uh, it goes uh, uh, against uh, a lot of the conventional wisdom uh, to, about uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood's secret apparatus. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, as, as some of you might know, was founded in 1928 by Hassan al-Banna. Uh, Hassan al-Banna, uh, when he founded the organization, uh, it immediately operated as a jihadist and terrorist group. Uh, very similar to Al-Qaeda and ISIS, but much, much more sophisticated. As according to the Muslim Brotherhood uh, operatives and co-founders themselves, they, they, they studied uh, criminal organizations across the world, including the mafia. They studied communism. They studied Stalin and Hitler's uh, power apparatuses. They studied uh, the uh, 11th and 12th century cult uh, and order of al hashashin the assassins. Uh, that said, the, the word assassin originates from this brutal Shia cult. And uh, that's according to their own words, not some conspiracy theory. Uh, so when they founded this uh, uh, intricate international criminal enterprise, they immediately started a secret apparatus. It's commonly thought that uh, the secret apparatus or the special apparatus, which was a terrorism uh, unit within the Brotherhood was founded in 1940. Uh, some people say 1945. The truth is it has been founded from the first day the Muslim Brotherhood was founded. And that's also a according to the Muslim Brotherhood themselves. Now, if you, uh, uh, if you, if you follow Middle East uh, politics or if you're interested in this topic, you might think that uh, this apparatus, uh, this terrorism apparatus that resulted in a lot of bombings, assassinations and countless terrorist attacks and inventing the suicide belt. Uh, you will think that this was a thing of the past and it belongs uh, within the confines of history books and I would argue that the opposite is the truth. And I would take it a step for, for further and claim that not only is the secret apparatus still operational, but it is the governing body of the Muslim Brotherhood and what uh, and, and, and it is operated in several forms, directly and indirectly. Sometimes they franchise it under different banners, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, Al-Jama'a Islamiya, which is Islamic group, excommunication and immigration, which is Takfir al-Hijra. They could have, they franchise it under different banners, but they also have their own unit. Uh, like, for example, Tanzim uh, Tesao, which is the group of 19, uh, uh, 1995. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood recently admitted that uh, the 95 militia, the terrorism group, is still uh, operational. Uh, they, uh, so uh, what, what my book uh, aims to achieve is to provide from their own words Irrefutable, irrefutable evidence that the terrorism apparatus is indeed uh, still there and it is in charge of the group. I'm also discussing the intelligence apparatus of the Muslim Brotherhood in my book. I'm also discussing uh, something, a unit within the Brotherhood that still also exists called the Batal Ikhwan, which is the Muslim Brotherhood officers and it is responsible to infiltrate and subjugate uh, their targeted nations, armies from the inside. Uh, 
And uh, there is, uh, uh, the, the evidence is so extensive that uh, I have collected it over the duration of 22 years. And uh, when I was outlining my book, uh, the citations for my, and, and the footnotes for my outline were close to 7,000 footnotes. Uh, uh, don't be afraid, I, <laughs> I will not include all this in the actual book, but uh, it, it's extensive evidence from their own source, sources. I'm very, very careful about that. And uh, uh, so it's, it, could, it could withstand the scrutiny of, of court if it is represented in court. And uh, my husband, uh, retired supervisory special agent Jeffrey James Higgins have brought a lot of terrorism uh, uh, cases uh, to, um, uh, to the federal courts and um, he's been very successful. He brought uh, Iranian spies to justice, narco terrorists to justice, and he knows how to build a very strong case. And I often run my evidence by him to see if, uh, if it's strong enough. And it, it usually is. And what I'm trying to achieve is hopefully uh, provide uh, this evidence to the United States government so they can have the ammunition to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. That is my first of short-term objective of this book. My second uh, long-term objective of the book is provide a Western audience, whether uh, they are scholars, whether they are law enforcement or um, intellectuals who are interested in the topic, uh, the ammunition, uh, uh, the epistemological tools they need to be able to decipher and understand Islamic history and how it relates to their reality and to be able to identify patterns of behavior that will help counter the Muslim Brotherhood threat. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood follows a very strict pattern of behavior of early Islamists and of its early founders. And when you recognize this pattern and you see it because it's a clandestine organization, so they do not advertise their membership. No one says I'm very few people ever say that they are members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And usually they are in leadership positions in the political apparatus. Um, because the, uh, the, the Brotherhood is more of a secret military apparatus with a political facade more than a political group with a terrorism apparatus. So it's very rare. So you need to uh, identify uh, membership and, and also subversive activities through patterns, special patterns of behavior. And I have applied my model and I was able to identify groups affiliated by the Muslim Brotherhood that were not previously known and are still not known neither in the Middle East nor in the United States. But I was able to find evidence because I used my own uh, methodology, which I discuss extensively in the book, and it worked. I also uh, do something else in the book, which I decipher the codes and the code language. They use terms like uh, Renaissance. They use terms like freedom. They use words like crisis. These don't mean what you think they mean. They have actual theological basis in the Muslim Brotherhood doctrine which I uh, include in the book also from their own words as always to explain like for example when when they say uh, we are at a moment of crisis and this is going to come in handy for law enforcement because you're tapping uh, terrorists or tapping people who are involved with terrorism funding and you say that we are in a moment of crisis it sounds like a benign statement but it's not according to a sitting uh, leader of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, Guidance Bureau, um, the term uh, uh, of crisis, which is mehna, is an activation of jihad. It's a code to activate violent perpetual jihad. That's a code, perpetual jihad and war. So terms like crisis 
that's what it means. Uh, terms like uh, uh, Renaissance, Islamic, uh, it means Islamic uh, awakening. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using t t terms like freedom. It actually means the exact opposite of what you think it means. It means subjugation under Sharia law. Um, and when they use these words, when they communicate with Westerners, whether law enforcement or media or regular Americans, or academia, we can fall into this trap of, of, of associating our own definitions uh, with these words while they often mean the opposite. So what I'm hopefully trying to do is to give you some tools uh, to identify the pattern of behavior. Also, one of the things that I hope to achieve with this book is try to uh, 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 explain the relationship Islamists have to history. Uh, while a Westerner would say those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, and Islamists would say those who do not learn from history cannot accurately repeat it. Um, they are living in the past and uh, I say in my book that history is not history and it, it, it never is when it comes to Islamism. It is more of a manual for reality and for the future. It is not, uh, it's, it's a model that they aspire to revive and achieve. And this is something that a lot of Westerners uh, do not comprehend and they think it's boring. No, it's not boring. It's actually uh, very interesting because it, it gives you a glimpse into a secret clandestine order that you would otherwise never have uh, access to. Um, so th th this is very, in I, I find this very, very interesting. I also uh, find it interesting how they employ tactics uh, that they have learned from uh, the German Communist Party and that they have learned from the Nazi Party and from Stalin's power apparatuses uh, where they incorporate a Cold War stratagems and uh, methodologies of covert warfare against the United States, according to their own words, again, not my conspiracy theory. Um, so I, I think it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. I think hopefully it would answer a lot of the questions that people have and hopefully uh, it will provide enough evidence to designate this terrorist group as a terrorist organization. Another fact in my book that you do most probably are not aware of is the Muslim Brotherhood is actually responsible for millions of deaths, not hundreds, not thousands, millions of deaths. And I'm proving this in my book as well. And it took, and, and this happened uh, through uh, genocide uh, uh, on the hands of their operatives and war criminals who um, guard, who, who, who governed several countries such as Sudan. Um, it's a very, very destructive uh, entity. It does sound like a conspiracy theory. And I did not know these things before I started collecting the uh, incredible amount of information I have. Uh, making these statements came with, uh, after 22 years of daily obsessive study. Uh, and everything I said here is backed with uh, an incredible amount of evidence. Uh, I hope that uh, we uh, start to think of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, not as a single operation because even if they're designated as a terrorist group, we can call them, uh, they, they'll, they'll be named something else like Al Qaeda is basically turned into ISIS and originally it was al Jamal Islami and so on and so forth. They keep changing and rebranding, but we need to have tools to be able to fight them before they become 
uh, so uh, um, so large and uh, so and metastasize uh, through these uh, different terrorism tentacles. So I hope that uh, this was not too boring for you. I look forward uh, to your questions. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I think we're all eagerly awaiting your book. Um, the first question in is, how strong is the Muslim Brotherhood in terms of numbers of members, finances, and influence on non-members? Well, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, actually, the, the, they have shrank significantly. Uh, the most accurate number of operatives uh, of active card carrying members of the Muslim Brotherhood is estimated between uh, 300,000 and 500,000 active members. So that's a very small number of active members. They have a lot of supporters, um, but uh, that's the act. They, unfortunately, while they are small in numbers, their political power is quite extensive and, and they are very, very powerful, especially in the United States of America. Um, I have uh, uh, a recording uh, of, of one of the Muslim Brotherhood operatives and strategist Khairat uh, al-Shatir making a statement about uh, one of his operatives that he's going, a female who's going to send to the United States and he's saying she knows how to speak Western. So they know how to speak Western. They know how to use your own terminology to uh, uh, against you. And uh, so unfortunately they're quite powerful. They were extremely powerful uh, in President Obama's administration. I have a lot of names. Uh, many of them have never been published before of people who are card carrying members that were operating within President Obama's administration. And I expect the same will unfortunately take place under President Biden. Thank you. And we have quite a few questions along the lines of how influential is the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States? I know you just touched on that, but can you expand a little? Absolutely. Uh, they are uh, very powerful within Hollywood. Uh, they have, uh, I'm actually in my book, you will see that uh, one of the Muslim Brotherhood torturers actual torturers caught in video uh, in, in involved in abduction, kidnapping and torture is an actor in Hollywood. Okay, uh, they are actually, they are involved in, uh, in uh, intelligence agencies. Uh, the Egyptian government, uh, for example, has claimed that Mohammed al Abiyari, who was a senior advisor under President Obama's administration, was an active member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I am leaning towards believing the Egyptian government when they made this claim, because incredibly in 2002, Mr. al Abiyari started an organization called Freedom and Justice. So only, and, and, I, and, and you know, 10 years later, the Muslim Brotherhood establishes the Freedom and Justice Party. I do not believe in coincidences. So these are only uh, two examples of um, how powerful uh, they are, but I, I list numerous examples in the book. You also have the Muslim Advocacy Day. That's one of the most dangerous events uh, in the United States or in the free world, where you have 300 to 400 members of the Muslim Brotherhood going to lobby Congress, including people who are involved directly with ISIS and Al Qaeda. Uh, you have one of the people who who frequently lobby Congress is Obama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden's webmaster. Osama bin Laden's webmaster sits in your congressional offices to dictate his policies that he wants America to abide by. And you have someone like Senator Cory Booker takes proudly takes selfies with him. You could find in my report on the Middle East Forum's website about that with pictures, with evidence. Um, and, and nobody, they have not challenged me. This report came out two years ago and they have never tried to challenge me. Because if someone, you know, if someone said, oh, Cynthia, you are uh, uh, involved with ISIS, you know what I would do? I would sue them for, for defamation, right? Uh, unless, I unless they have picture evidence, then it becomes uncomfortable. 
Thank you. And is this also a threat in Canada? Yes, of course. Uh, Canada is, I would argue, is far, far much and a much bigger uh, uh, problem than, than we are in the United States because um, the, the, the most Canadians, unfortunately, are able to accept these broad leftist slogans of, uh, of coexistence and uh, Islamophobia and countering Islamophobia, and they're not very uh, fond of free speech like us here in the United States. So yes, the situation in Canada is worse, and of course, in most countries in Europe. So moving forward, how would the appropriate way to deal with the Muslim Brotherhood be? Uh, do you think that Biden will, the Biden administration will designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization? And is that enough? I don't think he will, absolutely not, because uh, they are heavily uh, reliant on the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they're not going to designate. But what I'm hoping to achieve is uh, provide enough irrefutable proof so it becomes embarrassing for them to openly support these jihadists and these terrorists. And hopefully the next administration would come and implement and, and, and designate them as a terrorist group. But that's the first step. The second step, of course, is to be able to identify the rhetoric and take a strong stance against that rhetoric. They have talking points. I was offered almost a million dollars a year, a job that would give me over a million dollars a year. So I would not be saying what I'm saying right now. Just to tweak my discourse a little bit. I wouldn't say that they're a peaceful organization, but I would say things like, oh, the terrorism, that was a thing of the past. That's a talking point that was offered the bribe for. Another talking point, Muslim Brotherhood chapters in other countries like America and uh, Tunisia and Jordan do not abide by the rules of the Guidance Bureau of Cairo. That's another disinformation that's absolutely false. That contradicts the Muslim Brotherhood's own bylaws. And that's a talking point that you need to recognize as dangerous and that's disinformation whether someone is engaging in it, uh, it, it with in this type of disinformation out of ignorance of malice it's not important but it is not true uh, so there needs to be uh, uh, much much more awareness to counter their narrative Understood, thank you. One of our viewers writes, my understanding is that the Brotherhood requires their new people to undergo an elaborate training program that uh, creates a highly disciplined group. Is this still the case and has social media undermined this objective? Uh, this is still the case. Uh, every single member has to go through, uh, every single member in the Muslim Brotherhood is a member of a Brotherhood battalion. And every, every single one of them not only the operatives of the military apparatus. If you are under 30 years old and you are a member of the Brotherhood and you have good health, you do get extensive training. They receive training on how to use uh, social media actually as well to spread uh, the Brotherhood's message. They have something called uh, Ligen Electronea, which is a cyber committees uh, where you get educated uh, on how to spread the Muslim Brotherhood narratives, how to harass, how to uh, go after uh, opposition online, how to uh, recruit new members and terrorists. Uh, all this is in my book also from their own sources. And um, uh, they also receive physical training depending on their age, they either enter, enter a family and then a battalion where they receive military training. And if they are juveniles or teenagers or children, they, also, they go into the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, Scouts where they start to receive physical exercise that would equip them to over, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to, to take on jihadist uh, training. And you have these, uh, these scout cells in America. And I, I, I've seen, I have, I have pictures 
of their training, and I have pictures of uh, their activities and who uh, the operatives are. So these scouts that recruit children for the Muslim Brotherhood are, oper are operating in the United States. I think my only follow-up question to that is how are we letting that happen? Um, I would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Training children, uh, it's, it's, it looks benign from the outside, but they say, they say the person who's training them, they say that we are training you so eventually you can uh, partake in, in jihad and uh, killing Sisi. Children, American children. Uh, so along those lines, is President Sisi under threat of being overthrown by the Muslim Brotherhood at this time? Always, always. He has been under threat since 2013. Um, and he is their number one enemy, of course, uh, because uh, um, according to my analysis, uh, he was a member at some point, not information. I, I, I also do something in the book where I segregate between facts and my opinion and my analysis. I do not blend them all together and just state them as fact. So in my own opinion, President Sisi, from the evidence that I have seen, he was an active member of the Muslim Brotherhood at some point in his life. Um, and uh, that's why he not only turned against them, but he is the most successful leader in countering them. So are there any countries that are strongly supporting the Muslim Brotherhood? And also, who exactly is the Muslim Brotherhood connected to? Other terrorist groups or organizations under false pretenses in the United States and abroad? Absolutely. So the countries that are affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood is the government is Sudan, uh, the government of uh, Qatar, of course. I have evidence in my book that the Qatari regime are card-carrying members in the Muslim Brotherhood. I uh, also, of course, Turkey, uh, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and uh, uh, Libya, uh, Tunisia. Uh, so there are a few countries, unfortunately, that are directly involved uh, with the Brotherhood. As for terrorist uh, organizations, uh, the vast majority of Sunni terrorist groups were founded by active or former members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the first time the Muslim Brotherhood started franchising uh, terrorism under a different banner happened in 1965 under the banner of the group of 65, Tanzim Khan Sosetin in Egypt, and then Al Jama Al Islamiyya. Uh, also uh, was founded by operatives of the Muslim Brotherhood. Excommunication and immigration was founded by active members of the Muslim Brotherhood. ISIS, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, was a former member of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's according to Karadawi, the Brotherhood theologian, was the one who said that. Um, Al-Qaeda, of course, was founded by active members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I am discussing in my book evidence that Osama bin Laden remained a member of the Muslim Brotherhood until the day he died. Um, so we have absolutely overwhelming evidence. I also discuss in the book the relationship between Al-Azhar University in Cairo and the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and I have uh, the founding document of Al-Qaeda. Uh, that's something nobody knows this, the, the, about this document. I have the founding document of Al-Qaeda and I'm releasing new information about the circumstances of how and when and where and why it was established. Um, so th th there is an incredible amount of information and I hope uh, with, of course, your audience help and with Middle East Forum's help, we're able to achieve uh, these goals. Thank you. And um, have you fe felt any threat to your security due to your openness and getting the truth out there? Well, 
Um, I, yes, I've always been, I've always been uh, um, under some form of threat. Like I, 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 I escaped my own assassination attempt in, uh, in October 9th, 2011. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, there is definitely a threat, but at the same time, I always remind the Muslim Brotherhood that I made sure that my death would be so much more destructive to them than my life. I told them I'd fight you worse while I'm rotting in my grave than right now, and they know that I'm telling the truth. So that weighs out their risk you know, reward, return a little bit. So hopefully they'll use their minds and not try to assassinate me. It will be worse for them, that's for sure. Oh goodness, yes, quite brave. Um, so when will your book be published and what is the name? Uh, so my book is called The Secret Apparatus. That's the working title right now. And uh, it's going to be published by uh, uh, Bombardier Press. It's a part of the Post Hill uh, Press. And uh, my editor is Adam Bello. I'm a big, big fan of my editor. And hopefully it will be within by the end of this year, but I still do not have a date. But I will certainly let you know as soon as I do. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm so sorry to our viewers. We have so many unanswered questions. We kept getting them in. Um, but unfortunately, we're at the close of our webinar. Thank you again, Cynthia, for joining us today. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you for having me. Of course. And for our viewers, please join us Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern for an update with Ashley Perry. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.